Namaste. I'm extremely happy to be standing on this prestigious TED TEDx platform to address this august gathering of doctors in this magnanimous institute of Ains Raipur. I'm Dr. Tejaswini Manogna. I landed here straight after six alternate days of night duties, each lasting for 36 hours, running around the wards, you know, in care of small babies, and navigating my schedules and negotiating my leaves with great difficulty. I'm standing here today. And uh, I'm so glad that I'm here today. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you all can relate to the, you know, struggles of a young postgraduate student. But I'm, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, I've taken a conscious choice. That was my conscious choice that I wanted to be in medicine. Because medicine is not just a profession, it's a calling. It's a calling towards service, service of the nation, and service of humanity at large. I was fortunate enough that once Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, he happened to come to my college. And, uh, you know, I got this opportunity where I could uh, interact with him and I could perform in front of him. And during his speech, once Dr. Kalam sir said, art and medicine, when they join together, they create a good human being. I am here today to unfold my story of, of how I joined my art and medicine. My story of prism of ideas. From being a little girl, little girl with big dreams to becoming a youngster with a burning passion that I want to do something for my nation and becoming the All India's best cadet. Being a graceful young dancer, you know, traveling extensively and performing across the globe. And, and to being an empathetic human being who wants to do service, you know, being a doctor, being an eco-activist, a philanthropist, and whatnot. And of course, to becoming a young woman who wants to be the voice of a lot of women, you know, walking the ramp confidently as Miss Earth India to getting back to hospital as a responsible doctor. So my journey starts like this. So I belong to a really, really simple family, a humble middle class family where we all love sitting down on the floor and sharing one meal together every day. And, um, you know, my parents, you know, I might not have had the luxury of having an own house or owning a lot of uh, facilities that all of us usually have, but they gave me the luxury of freedom. My parents let me follow my passion. They gave me wings and they never stopped me. I think that is the treasure that they have given me. That is the property that they have given me that, you know, they have given me the property of discipline. They have given me the property of, you know, being, you know, respecting your elders and a value-based life and working hard for your goals, setting your goals. I think these are the properties that I imbibe from my parents and these are the properties that I am giving to my next generations in the form of my talks. And I'm extremely happy about that. So I became a motivating factor to youngsters across the country. And my journey started like, you know, um, my mom, she was actually working in US. She happened to give up her job, you know, because she thought she had to justify as a mother. And uh, because of that, like, she came back and then she started taking me to classes and competitions. And, uh, you know, we used to go in auto rickshaws where she used to plait my hair, we used to eat my lunchbox, and then changing from one bus to the other. And, uh, you know, going to competitions. And at late in the night at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, I used to give my, uh, you know, come back from performances and wake up 5 a.m. In, in the morning and again go to tuitions. My journey was something like this. And uh, during the process, you know, the society was not really acceptive of what my mom was doing. They thought, you know, why are you doing this all for a girl child? You know, you don't really have to do all of that. And, uh, but me, as, you know, as her daughter who wanted to justify the effort that she has put in, you know, she's been putting in me, I, I really worked hard into whatever she got me into. I enjoyed doing that. And I slowly started getting some prizes, some medals, some certificates, and some scholarships. And soon I started developing, you know, to the extent of giving 3,000 performances across the globe. And uh, being a Bharatanatyam dancer, I've traveled extensively. And uh, I met a lot of eminent personalities. I had a close connection with them. I, had, I got the opportunity to see how these people have come up in their lives. So, you know, that was a beautiful journey where my, through, the, through my Bharatanatyam. After that, I had this passion for nation building. 
I had this passion for uniform. I wanted to wear the uniform. And uh, you know, I thought as a young girl who was studying in eighth standard, I thought I could be useful for the nation in terms of national emergency, and I really wanted to be in service. So I got into NCC, and after six months of uh, you know, extra effort and all, I was actually you know, rejected. At that point, that small heart of mine was really broken. And I really wanted to go back, and I rose like a phoenix. And then, you know, I worked hard for 18, uh, 18 hours a day for six months with early morning of rifle drill and rifle shooting and group discussions and extempores and facing the interviews with the director general and commanding the boys' contingent. And finally, I marched the Rajpath, and I got the All India's Best Cadet among 13 lakh cadets, <laughs> getting the Prime Minister's Medal and the President's Appreciation. And later on, I happened to like, represent India in the Sark Nations, where I got the Sark Countries Medal from the Sri Lankan President and Prime Minister back then. And again, you know, in this journey, people thought I was not even the size of a rifle. But you know, I made it to the becoming the All India's Best Kid among 30 lakh people back then. And soon after I finished my journey into NCC, next came the next challenge that uh, during that time I was in my 11th grade, Next thing I had to do was my, you know, I was in BIPC. I had to give my exam for medicine, clear MSET, and get into medicine. And during that time, the college where I was studying taught, you cannot balance both of it. You either do this or that. And it wasn't really supportive of them. So, you know, I had my, my home became my college. I happened to sit in the home, and then my mom tried to manage some tuitions. And then uh, I actually, like, got a good grade, and then I got into, uh, you know, my state's best Usmania Medical College, and I finally got into medicine. And um, once, I, once I got into medicine, people, thought, people told me that, hey, you've done a lot of things so far, but once you've got into medicine, I don't think this is possible. You know, that's when the journey started. Like any others in school, I actually worked hard for 18 hours a day. Uh, I got good grades, and I was amongst the toppers in my class. But at the same time, when people got time to chill, that's when I used to go and participate in a lot of activities. For example, I went to Ames, you know, Ames in Delhi, Pulse. Uh, so all my uh, co-batchmates, co like, they came there to enjoy, but I actually went to AIDS and participated and won some medals. So in that way, like, I went internationally, and then I got student of the year and a lot of accomplishments even during my medical school. And finally, like, my medical school professors believed that, hey, we are actually proud of you, and we know you could balance both of it. You know, the trick was about balance, balancing your profession and passion. And soon, after my medical school, that's when I realized that, hey, I think I want to go and participate in Miss India. Because uh, during my childhood, I always heard that, you know, I was born when Sushmita Sen was crowned, and I had the features of Aishwarya Rai. So that somehow instilled the spark in me that I always wanted to participate in Miss India somehow. So me being a traditional girl from a quite traditional family, it was very hard to convince my family people that I'm going to participate in a pageant like this. All of them told me that, you know, all these pageant winners, they, they speak on stage, but uh, you know, I don't think they would actually implement any of the service activities that they're actually speaking on stage. So I had to prove my family members wrong that you know, I said, I have a vision why I'm participating in my pageants. I want to be the voice of women. I want to be the voice of youth. I want to be on the platforms like UNICEF and WHO and propagate for the youth of my country. And finally, my family people were convinced where I started to participate in Miss Universe India initially. And me being some, a, a proper traditional girl, you know, not very tall as the models and not as beautiful skin and all, but still, I managed to be the top five of Miss Universe India. I was so close to winning the crown. I was supposed to win the crown, but <laughs> some things are prefixed, so you have to, you know, adjust with that. And um, I was told that, you know, when I was low at that point that I couldn't make to the crown, I was told that, hey, I think you deserve, you know, you deserve bigger things in life. I went back to the pageant again. And the next time I went back, I was rejected by my co-participant who was, you know, uh, in light in the local rounds. I went back again. But then the organizers started to tell me that, you know what, you should win a Filmfare Award and then come back, and only then we will let you participate. I was like, why me? Like, you know, participation is my basic right. Why am I denied of my basic right? I asked my mom, like, why me? Like, why is this happening to me? And then she told me, you know, maybe God has better plans for you. And at that point, I actually gave up on my pageant journey, and I started to study for NEET. 
And um, without my mom's notice, I just applied online for this pageant called Miss Earth India. And I got a call from them. As soon as I got a call from them uh, and I booked my tickets, I was ready to travel. And my mom was like, no, this time we are not going. I'm not letting you break down again. So we are not going. So I wasted my tickets. I didn't travel. But still, you know, there was this one friend of mine who came up and said, is this what you were working for in the last two years? No, you have to go for it. And then I convinced my mom and then we happened to travel to Delhi. And at that point, uh, you know, in that one week of pageant, on the same day as my finale, I had this opportunity to go to this uh, a wonderful school in Masuri, the St. George's School, you know, where eminent personalities usually come and you know address this uh, gathering there. It was on the same day, which was August 31st, 2019. I wanted to do both, you know. I didn't have the guarantee that, you know, what if I don't make it to the crown this time? I might miss this opportunity of going to St. George's. What if I go to St. George's? I might not be able to come back to participate in my pageant. So I had to make a choice, you know, with full night of rehearsals going on. At 4 o'clock, I told them, okay, I have an exam in Hyderabad. Can I please go and come back? And then I happened to go to Masuri. I happened to actually give a speech there. I happened to come back to Delhi at, at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I participated in my finale. And I made it to the crown. That was the best day in my life. <laughs> you know, it was worth taking a risk that I could do both of it. And then comes in the next 15 days my international pageant. 15 days is really less for an international pageant, OK? I had loads of luggage. And then the moment I got into the airport, the you know airport that already told me that you can't carry so much of luggage, you'll have to pay 80,000 extra, which was much beyond the ticket, ticket price. So I could not really carry my luggage. I left half of the luggage here, and then I went to Philippines. I've given my best throughout each, each day that I participated there. And every day was a challenge for me. Number one, that I didn't have all my luggage. Number two, when it came to one of these, uh, you know, uh, a competition where I had to represent the country's outfit, I chose to present an outfit where I, I, I portrayed the 18 hands of Goddess Durga, and I showed Mahishasura Mardini in the form of killing pollution. You know, instead of holding a head and killing it like that, I threw a plastic packet like that and started killing it to represent, you know, the power of a goddess, you know, killing the plastic pollution. And then the next round was my talent round. In my talent round, I, I usually dance in a mud pot. And after I went there, I realized that mud pot was broken. I had no choice, you know. I, giving up was never an option for me. What I did was I went, to, I went back to my room. I found a dustbin, a, a steel dustbin, thankfully. I decorated it with flowers, and I danced on it, and I got a gold medal for India by dancing on a dustbin. And then intelligence round. Intelligence round, I topped it. You know, I, I got the best. And I was people's choice. Like, I was the global people's choice award winner. People loved me for what I am. Every competition was seen live everywhere. And it, when it was about the finale, it, I, I was sure that, you know, I was in the top four. I was making it there, you know, winning the international crown and coming back. But boom. <laughs> that, was a, that was a business deal at the end. And then I came back with no crown and then I was so heartbroken. I was like, OK, what am I doing next in my life? Like, what next? I had this question people started asking me. I had this question to my own self, like, you know, what am I going to do next? The only answer that I gave, I, I started asking myself, and I thought that, you know, I want to do best to my nation and to myself. And that's what I want to do, that I wanted to get back to my profession of being a doctor. There started the journey again, all new. You know, starting from NEAT examination again, sitting down and preparing for NEAT, and then making it to post-graduation, and finally coming into my dream branch of pediatrics that I'm doing right now. What was expected out of after pageants was movies, but in contrary to that, I choose to get back to my profession and justify myself as a doctor, because I wanted to be in service of my nation in real terms. And, you know, as I said, I'm going through the struggles of, you know, being a postgraduate right now with uh, all my activities lying. It's with, you know, negotiating my leaves. To, you know, it's really hard to make time for all of this right now. So, out of all my journey, what I realized is that, you know, setbacks, rejections. I've seen so many rejections. Like rejections will be a part of your life. And what is success? Success for me is never about winning a crown or winning any pageant or winning any competition. Success for me was definitely about picking up myself the next time again after I fell down. That was success to me. 
success def definition. Every time you fall, the way you pick yourself up is success. You know, just like a prism, that's the topic of the AIMS Trifo to the, uh, now, you know, this year. A white light goes into the prism and then a diversion happens and then that diversion gives you a rainbow of colors. Just like that, you know, life definitely throws you down and gives you a lot of diversions and dispersions, you know, and that gives you a rainbow of colors in your life and which will actually help you realize the capabilities that, you know, the possibilities that can happen in your life, right? <laughs> and throughout this journey, I think what kept me balanced, what kept me peaceful was my activities, like, you know, while studying now, right now, and it was my yoga. I'm a trained yoga practitioner, and I train people in yoga, uh, and uh, I've been training police academies, and I've been training, and my yoga show runs on daily in the TV. So it is that yoga which kept me balanced and cool throughout the process, you know, out of what all I've faced in my life. And uh, of course, like, you know, it's that activities. Like, I'm not really a party person. Like, I, I enjoy going to schools and, like, seeing these kids smile. So a lot of philanthropic activities, like being an eco-activist and then, uh, you know, going to a lot of schools and colleges, motivating them and telling them, like, you know, how I could achieve this much in a given span of time and what you can do to achieve, in a, you know, in the given time. You know, uh, it's, it, the, the, the capsule is just simple. That firstly, you need to have, you need to dream big. Once you dream big, you need to have a vision. Once you have a vision, you need to plan yourself. And once you plan yourself, you need to start executing that plan. And you need to work hard towards that plan. And you need to know that failures will be a part of your journey, but how you move ahead, overcoming those failures is what defines you and what gives the definition of a life to you. So I'm extremely grateful at this point, you know, this point that I'm able to stand in front of you all and talk like this, you know, Ames is a beautiful institution, everybody dreams of studying here. To be able to stand in front of you all and to be able to address you all, I'm extremely grateful for all of that. I'm extremely grateful for people who've been part of my life, who've given me a pat, and the people who have criticized me also, because all of them have been part, you know, have played a an equal part, you know, in making me today. And uh, thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. And I am Tejaswini Manogna, and I'm sure that I am for the service of the nation, and I dedicate myself to the nation's cause today on this stage. Thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm.